Hola, welcome to the Good News Roundup, your weekly digest of what's going well in the world. In today's positive news, a scientific breakthrough that could see you charging your phone using the sun. A man who won 200 million euros on the lottery and spent almost all of it setting up a charity, an initiative turning London buses into treatment centers for homeless people, the world's biggest animal crossing being built over one of California's busiest highways, and the brewers making the beer to help the humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. Forgot your phone charger? Wouldn't it be handy if there was one big ball of energy in the sky you could use instead? This could be closer than you think, thanks to a recent scientific breakthrough. It all started back in 2017 when researchers at a Swedish university created a system that can capture and store solar energy for up to 18 years. This was a radical advance in itself, but a big challenge remained, turning this store of solar power into electricity. But last month, the Swedish scientists of Chalmers University took their sunshine all the way to Shanghai, where they teamed up with researchers from Jiao Tong University to do just that. I'm, I'm very excited about this work. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, a, it's something we have worked for, for many years to achieve. We have been working on developing uh, molecular systems that can capture sunlight, store it, and release it uh, as heat on demand. Uh, so the new thing here is that we have uh, developed a device that can convert this heat into electric power in a very local way. The new generator is an ultra-thin chip that could be integrated into electronics such as headphones, smartwatches and telephones. So this tech could potentially replace batteries, giving us a new way to harness the sun's energy and help the climate while keeping our music, our voice notes and our Instagram feeds going. So you've won the lottery. You have 2 million euros in your pocket. What do you spend it on first? A yacht? Maybe a penthouse in Paris? Private island? Would you travel perhaps? I think I would. But a man in France who found himself in this fortunate position decided on something a little different. His used his jackpot winnings, almost all 200 million of them, to set up an environmental foundation to protect forests and boost biodiversity. My dream has never been to acquire boats, castles or sports cars. It is to be useful and to give meaning to this money, with a maximum positive impact." The man said in an open letter, which he signed using the pseudonym Guy. His real name remains a mystery. Guy has named his foundation Anyama, after a city in Ivory Coast where he has spent time. His plan is to continue living peacefully and as discreetly as he can. Isabelle Césari, the head of Big Winners Relations at Française des Jeux, the operator of France Lottery, said the donation was a great first. Though she says generosity comes up very frequently among winners, but most often concerning their inner circle. So let this be a lesson in generosity to us all, even if we don't have 200 million euros to spare. And now, how are coffee and big red buses changing the lives of homeless people? through an initiative that turns London buses into mobile treatment centers. It is done by a coffee company called Change Please, which uses 100% of its profits to finance charity. They use the money to combat homelessness by giving barista training and offering housing and employment opportunities. And now they've launched a project that will see three London buses equipped to support homeless people. One bus is run but we have sponsored by HSBC. And on that bus, we can help the homeless open up bank accounts. We also have a hairdresser on board because that's important. People forget it's still important for the homeless to feel good about themselves as much as they're on the street. At least they can come on board and be looked after and be cared for. We have a shower on a bus as well, on both buses. Then on the Colgate bus, we have a full dental suite. These are all very small things that we can do to help somebody feel human again and to help them to be um, made to feel that they've been seen. If you could think about one thing that we could say to people, if there's one thing they can do to help the cause, what would it be? For me, it's to stop and listen. Stop, listen, have a chat, have a smile for somebody who's less fortunate than yourself. If you want to give somebody food or if you want to give somebody a drink, ask them what they would like rather than just putting a coffee in front of them.
Imagine driving down a 10-lane highway and knowing there's a lion crossing the road right above you. If you're in California in 2025, this could well be the case. The world's largest animal crossing will begin construction this month over one of the USA's busiest highways. It will be 64 meters long and 50 meters wide and will link mountain areas that are currently divided by the road allowing animals, such as coyotes, lizards, and protected mountain lions, to go between the two areas safely. Beth Brad, a conservation leader with the National Wildlife Federation, spent almost 10 years planning the project, convincing the authorities to go ahead and raising funds. And this is amazing. I've been working on this a decade. We're about to break ground tomorrow. More than half of the cost will be financed by private donations, including a $300,000 donation from Leonardo DiCaprio's foundation. Robert Rock, the landscape architect who led the design, says this nature center type of construction makes it unusual among other wildlife bridges. This one is designed to blend into the environment on both sides and send a message to the people driving below. Unlike a traditional freeway overpass, the crossing will support wildlife and provide the habitat, shelter, food, and water that individual species need to thrive. The top of the crossing will be covered and stretched over nearly half a hectare of native vegetation. Why did the lion cross the road? Because he had a safe and environmentally sound place to do so. Now from California to the north of England, where locals are helping to save lives in Ukraine by doing what they've done best for millennia, brewing beer. The town of Twice Brewed, yes, that's his real name, in the north of England has a brewing tradition that goes back to the Roman times. And now a brewery based there has joined a collective of local brewers who are raising money for the Red Cross's humanitarian work in Ukraine with a beer made of beetroot, a traditional ingredient in Ukrainian cuisine. The beer, called Resist and described as a Ukrainian anti-imperial stout, was developed by displaced Ukrainian brewers for the campaign Drinkers for Ukraine. Basically, imperial stout is like a strong stout. The stout being a dark beer, a dark multi, a really dark multi beer, and imperial stout tends to be like a really strong dark beer. Uh, and obviously, because it's, uh, it's Ukraine standing up to Russia, they've decided to call it an anti-imperial stout. I think what will make ours quite unique is the fact that no one's taking a cut from it at all, not even to cover. Yeah, we've all donated our time for free or donated energy or, or resources. So there's not like there's, there's no expenses to be covered. They shared the recipe online and put out a call to breweries around the world to make it and donate the proceeds to the Red Cross. They've managed to brew 750 liters of Ukrainian beer, with most of it already pre-ordered. So beer fans can raise a glass to, and vital funds for, the Red Cross and its work on the ground in Ukraine. If you enjoyed our roundup and want to hear more good news, subscribe to our YouTube channel, let us know in the comments, and share our stories with your friends. Good news travels fast. And if you've got a positive story you think we should share, send it to us by using the hashtag GoodNewsYourNews. And remember, some news can be good news.